blasting is a fast, efficient method of surface cleaning. It can be a truly useful tool, but only when practiced safely. For this reason, the Minnesota Department of Transportation has produced this video to demonstrate the correct safety procedures for setting up and running our sandblasting equipment. Let's run down the checklist of equipment that you'll need for proper operation. First, here are the main parts. An air compressor, the sandblaster unit, the moisture traps, the air purification system, the breathing air monitor, an approved helmet, the sandblast hose, and a Venturi-style nozzle. Connecting these main parts together are a one-inch blaster to compressor hose, one three-fourth inch, one one-half inch, and one one-fourth inch hose for the air purification system. Make sure you have rubber washers in each hose coupling and pins to fasten them. You'll also need a supply of clean, dry sand. The most important equipment you'll use is the safety and protection gear. These items are designed to ensure that your job is done safely as well as effectively. The most important pieces of safety equipment are the safety helmet and its air purification unit. But also important to your safety are earplugs and a pair of heavy gloves. You should also have on hand replacement shields or tearaway shields for the helmet. They are essential for providing you with clear vision at all times. The blaster and the assistant should always wear long sleeve shirts or coats to protect their arms from blasting debris. The safety of the blasting assistant is also provided for with dust masks used whenever you are handling the sand or in the sand blasting area. Earplugs and a face shield are also used when operating and filling the blasting unit. Once you have all the equipment necessary, you are ready to set up. Safety is the first thing to consider each time you set up for sandblasting. Precautions need to be taken for the operators and for anyone else entering or coming near the sandblasting area. Protection for pedestrian and motorized traffic must be provided to ensure public safety. You can refer to Appendix B of the Traffic Control Guide for correct traffic control procedures. It may also be necessary to erect plywood guards to protect traffic, pedestrians, or buildings near the sandblast area. Always use scaffolding that meets OSHA requirements for working above ground level. Never use makeshift platforms, such as two barrels with a plank between them. Operators also need to remember to wear an approved safety belt or harness and lanyard when working above 10 feet in the air. A safety life vest is required when working over water. Make sure you have all the protective clothing, helmet with tearaway shields, heavy gloves, hearing protection, dust masks, face shields, and that you are wearing a long sleeve shirt or coat. Now that you have a safe working environment, you are ready to assemble the sandblaster. First, learn the operating procedure for the compressor you will be using. If you are renting, check with the supply company for an instructional manual. If you are borrowing from the bridge crew, ask the supervisor. Since the air for the operator originally came from the compressor, make sure the compressor you are using is in good operating condition. 
Check that the compressor is equipped with bleed-off valves so that air pressure can be released from the hoses before they are disconnected. Check the air connections on the compressor for compatibility with your hose. If the fitting is incorrect, change the fitting on the compressor, not on the hose. The compressor should also have enough power output for the job. There are two checks to make before connecting the compressor. First, make sure you eliminate the possible tunnel effect of the exhaust. For this compressor, simply keep the side shields shut. Next, check that the main air supply valve on the sandblaster is off. Then, using at least a one inch inside diameter hose, make the connection between the two units. Each coupling should have a rubber washer that fits snugly. Then, fasten each coupling together with a pin. All hoses used should have banded fittings only, not clamped. Only banding provides the strength needed to keep the fitting tight. Any unused hoses should have a closed connection on them. This keeps the hose free from dirt or other objects that may clog it or the filter system. It also provides protection if the hose is turned on by mistake. Within the sandblaster setup, there are moisture traps. These remove water from the system. The petcock valve on each one needs to be opened just enough to allow any water collected to drain out, but not enough to lower the air pressure. Next, connect the standing moisture trap to the sandblaster using the attached 3 4 inch diameter hose. Then, check the air purification system. The purpose of the system is to remove any oil, water vapor, dirt, sand, and rust scale from the airline before it gets to the helmet. Inside, the first cartridge removes oil and water vapor. Remember, its valve should be open slightly. The second and third cartridges are identical. They are absorbent chemical purifier chambers. The fourth chamber is activated carbon. It controls contaminants such as hydrocarbons, odors, and carbon monoxide. Before checking the filters, be sure the air supply is disconnected. Then, simply unscrew the locking ring and remove the cover. The first filter is changed every six months. The other three need to be checked for moisture, dirt, or damage before starting each day. The second and third cartridges have an indicator line inside that is blue when dry and turns brown when wet. These two cartridges should be checked at least halfway through the day. If they are wet, they should be replaced. This is one of the most important safety checks to make because only by using clean, dry filters is the operator insured of a fresh air supply. When you have finished checking the filters, take the one half inch inner diameter hose attached to the standing moisture trap and connect it to the air purifier system. Next, connect the purification system to the operator's helmet using one quarter inch inner diameter hose. Check the condition of the helmet, the shroud, the airline, and the safety shield for wear. The operator's safety depends on good, clear vision, so be sure to have enough replacement shields to last through the job. If tearaway shields are available, apply five or six, placing them alternately for easier removal. Air pressure to the helmet is controlled by a regulator valve inside the purification unit. It should be adjusted to the point where 
air motion is felt just slightly by the person wearing the helmet. You can now connect the sandblasting hose to the sandblaster. Use the shortest hose possible. This will help keep the hose from getting tangled in other equipment. The hose and the nozzle should be the right size for the job. Smaller nozzles can be useful for covering small areas or easy to clean surfaces such as loose paint. Larger nozzles will give you a stronger, wider spray and allow you to clean large areas much faster. The nozzle should be a Venturi style nozzle. These nozzles give you a wider, more uniform blast pattern and greater sand velocity. Both hose and nozzle should be in good condition and free from dirt. Make sure that the couplings on the hose and nozzle have rubber washers. Blast cleaning nozzles shall be equipped with an operating valve which must be held open manually. Once the system is connected, you can go ahead and fill the blaster with about four bags of clean, dry sand. Make sure you and anyone else in the area wear proper breathing protection. Breathing dust from the sand can cause the lung disease silicosis. While filling the blaster, be careful not to put your hands inside the concave head. Always replace the cover and check that all fittings are tight before pressurizing the unit. Now that the unit is connected and your site is set up safely, you are ready to begin operation. Before you start to sandblast, work out the series of hand signals that you will use to communicate with your assistant while the blaster is running. For example, one, turn the unit on. Two, turn the unit off. Three, out of sand. When you have worked out the signals, you and your assistant can put on your protective gear and begin sandblasting. Before turning the air supply valve on, make sure the blaster control valve is in the off position. Then, when the operator signals, the assistant can turn the control valve to the on position. The sandblaster will pressurize and sand will start coming out almost immediately. Use the sand metering valve to adjust the sand flow. You should adjust the flow until you get the best blasting power from the least amount of sand possible. Remember, never point the nozzle at anyone, even if there is no sand coming out. The air pressure can be up to 120 pounds per square inch and is capable of causing serious damage to skin, eyes, and ears. Never horseplay with blow pipes and compressed air. Also, watch out for broken or uncoupled hoses. When under pressure, they can start to whip, becoming a serious hazard to anyone in the area. The blasting assistant should be aware that because of the helmet, the operator has a very limited view of the surrounding area. Because of the equipment noise, the operator won't hear any sound warnings of dangers nearby. It is imperative that the blasting assistant be alert to the operator's signals and be on the lookout for his safety at all times. During operation, the assistant should periodically shake the machine to prevent the sand from bridging up inside. If the sand bridges, the operator may think that the sand has run out. He may then be caught off guard if the sand were to suddenly fall and start coming through again. When you shut off the control valve, the machine also depressurizes so that it can be refilled. Remember. Do not remove the screen. When you are finished blasting, make sure that the area is completely cleaned up. Any rust or paint chips must be removed from the area to ensure
that they do not get into the waterways or sewers. The used sand should also be swept up and properly disposed of. If you have any questions, contact your supervisor. Dust masks must be worn during cleanup. Many old paint primers contain lead and pose a serious health hazard. Operators and assistants need to make sure to wash up after sandblasting. Some of the same hazards posed to your lungs by blasting dust in the air can be presented by dust on your hands and face. Be sure to have some means of cleaning your hands before eating or using tobacco products. Never use an air hose to clean yourself off or anyone else. Use a broom on your clothes and towelettes for your hands and face. Your stockroom can provide you with towelettes for cleaning up. Now, let's review these methods of sandblaster operation and safety you have just seen. First, make sure that you have all the safety equipment. Protection helmet with tearaway shields, heavy gloves, hearing protection, dust masks, assistance face shield, and long sleeve shirts or coats. Second, check that all of the sandblaster unit's parts are in good condition and are the appropriate size for the job. Third, be sure the sandblasting site is set up for public and worker safety. Fourth, make sure that the sandblasting unit is correctly connected and that all fittings are tight and pinned. Fifth, always use safe practices while sandblasting and never allow horseplay. Use hand signals for operator and assistant communication and be alert to any hazards that may arise during operation. Sixth, leave the site clean and free of paint chips and sand. A good rule is to leave the site cleaner than you found it. Seventh, be aware of personal hygiene, especially in cleaning your hands and face before eating or using tobacco products. Following these procedures will ensure everyone's health and safety while doing your job efficiently and effectively. Cultural diversity, workforce...